Hi, my name is Robin Wong and in this video, I want to share a few tips on shooting with low light using your Olympus OMD camera. We have a lot of ground to cover, so let's do this. In case you're not aware, I've done a video on a similar topic before. I'll put the link to the video up here. Please check it out if you have not done so. The reason I'm revisiting this topic is because a lot of people still ask me the same question. This is a popular topic. And I know Olympus is not the best when it comes to low light shooting, especially when you have to push the ISO numbers really high. However, I have also been shooting with Olympus OMD system as a professional a photographer for many many years so I thought in this video I can share some of the tips that I've been using all these years maybe you can benefit from them and maybe you can do low light shooting a little bit better after this video Tip number one, do not use auto ISO. I know this will sacrifice some convenience while you are shooting with your camera, but if you let your camera decide your ISO values for you, your camera will have a high tendency of selecting very high ISO numbers, much higher than necessary. Sometimes it goes all the way up to ISO 6400 for no good reason, while you can easily get away with ISO 1600 or even ISO 800 in that sense similar situation. That's two to three stops of difference and you can prevent that easily by selecting your ISO numbers manually. We are currently at the River of Life. This is where Kuala Lumpur got its name. It's the meeting of two rivers, Klang River and Gombat River. Currently, I have my camera set to auto ISO. As you can see, the camera is very eager to select ISO 6400. That's crazy. We can definitely lower this down by using the auto ISO. Now I'll select my ISO manually, going down to maybe 800. I'm sure I can get away with a great image. Let's take a photograph. ISO 800 looks perfectly fine to me. Look at the details. And at ISO 800, the noise is still very well suppressed. And look at the sharpness. Look at the details in the windows and all oh, the flag and everything. I think this is just perfect. You don't need to trust the camera's auto ISO that goes ridiculously high. You can manually lower it down. You can get much better results. Tip number two. Trust your camera's image stabilization. Your Olympus OMD has the most powerful 5S image stabilization in the market. If you're not dealing with any movement in your photograph, then I highly suggest that you slow down your shutter speeds. At the same time, maintain your ISO at very low numbers like ISO 400 or even ISO 200. Trust me, your camera's image stabilization will steady your shot. You may deal with dangerously slow shutter speeds like 1 10th of a second, 1 5th of a second. Sometimes you have to stretch to 1 or 2 seconds. Don't worry, the camera will give you tech sharp images even though you're shooting handheld. I've made a video shooting about 30 seconds handheld with EM1 Mark III and get away with usable results. I'll put the link to the video up here. Of course, I'm not asking you to stretch all the way to 10 seconds, 20 seconds. If you need to do long exposure, please use a tripod. But for handheld shooting, one second, two seconds, it makes a huge difference when you have the powerful 5 axis image stabilization on your side. This is a relatively dark scene and typically I will need very high ISO numbers, maybe 1600 or 3200 to get enough shutter speed to freeze the frame. At 3200, I get about 1 over 30th of a second, which is very, very safe. I'm currently using the EM5 Mark III and I have the Panasonic kit lens 12 to 32. Of course, I'm shooting at 12mm, the widest angle and at the widest aperture as well at f3.5. Now, I know I'm using the EM5 Mark III and it has a powerful 5 axis image stabilization which I really trust so I'm going to lower down the ISO all the way to 200 which is the base native ISO and I'm going to see if I can hand hold this shot so I'm going to take this shot it's about half a second not too bad review the shot 
of course I can take the shot. Of course the EM5 Mark III can handle half a second shutter speed. Look at the details. This is amazing. Everything is tech sharp and I got the image perfect. Tip number three, use prime lenses. For example, the Olympus 17, 25, 45 or the 75 f1.8. The brighter aperture and the larger opening in the lens will allow more light to come into the camera. This will allow you to use much lower ISO numbers. This will make a huge difference if you shoot a lot in low light. I understand some of you may not want to spend too much money to upgrade to prime lenses, but we are not lacking options today. There are cheap options out there. For example, the Xiaomi 42.5 f1.8 prime lens, which costs about less than 100 US dollars. I've made a review about that lens. I'll put the link to a video up here. Please check it out. And recently, I've purchased a Yongnuo 25 f1.7 for about 100 US dollars. Just about 100 US dollars, you'll make a huge difference when you are shooting in low light. I'm going to start with the kit lens. This is the Panasonic 12 to 32 mm kit lens. Zoom into 25, and it is already f 5.1. Now, currently, let me check my ISO number. I am at ISO 200, of course, at 25 mm. I want to shoot maybe at about one over 20th of a second. Let's see if I can do that at ISO 1600. ISO 1600 still not enough. I'll probably need to push much higher maybe ISO 6400 to get about, yeah, 1 over 20th of a second. That's just something that I'm comfortable shooting handheld. That's ISO 6400 with the kit lens. I've just switched over to the Yongnuo 25 f1.7 Prime and immediately you can see that I've dropped the f number all the way to f1.7. That's a lot brighter, gathering a lot more light. And my shutter speed is a lot faster. I don't need ISO 6400 anymore. So the question is how much I can drop the ISO number? I'm guessing I can drop it all the way to ISO 1000 and still maintain the 1 over 20th of a second. I can still drop it a little bit more. Let's go to ISO 800 and yes I can maintain 1 over 20th of a second that's incredible from ISO 6400 all the way to ISO 800 and that gives you much cleaner image this is why I highly encourage you to use prime lens if you do a lot of low light work with Olympus or any other camera system if you are interested in seeing my review for the Yongnuo 25 f1.7 prime lens, please let me know in the comments below. And trust me, I will do my best. I will definitely do the review as soon as I can. Please understand currently Malaysia is still under lockdown. I can't just roam around freely. There are a lot of restrictions in place. But when I can, trust me, I will go out and take as many photographs as I can. There are a lot of pending reviews that I have to do. Tip number four, do not underexpose your shot. This is especially true if you're shooting at very high ISO number and if you severely underexpose your shot, the problem happens when you try to recover the details in post-processing. That's when the ugly noise happens. Therefore, it is very important that you get your exposure as accurate as possible while you are shooting. Even at very high ISO, if you expose the images correctly, your Olympus OMD will produce excellent results with very minimal noise and plenty of good details. Tip number five, and perhaps the most important tip of all, noise is not the end of the world. I repeat, noise is not the end of the world. A lot of photographers are too obsessed in getting noise-free, clean, high ISO image. They get allergic every time they see a little bit of noise in their photographs. But trust me, noise is not the problem here. You can have a little bit of noise in your photograph, that's perfectly fine, but there are more important things to worry about. For example, 
What's the story that you're trying to tell? Have you successfully captured the important moment in the photograph? Is the idea and the message behind your photograph strong enough? What's the emotion that you want to convey and have you successfully done that through your photographs? It doesn't matter if there's some noise in your photograph. If you can do all these things, then it is still a good photograph. I've delivered a lot of photographs to my clients over the years. I've shot with very high ISO, ISO 6400, and beyond and my clients have no problem with my photographs of course they contain some noise but I managed to capture memories I managed to capture moments and these are truly important things that they hired me to do and I delivered them successfully Trust me, obsessing over high ISO noise or any other technicalities in the camera like dynamic range or sharpness is not healthy. You have to focus on what's more important, the core of photography. Ask yourself what you are doing with your photography. Ask yourself if the content of your photograph good enough. If it is good, even if your image is very, very noisy, it is still a great photograph. That's all I have to share about how to deal with low light shooting with your Olympus OMD camera. In summary, do not use auto ISO, trust your camera's image stabilization, use prime lens if possible, do not underexpose, and go high ISO. Don't worry so much about noise, noise is not the end of the world. Just in case if you are wondering why I'm walking and talking while I'm grabbing the camera with my hand instead of my usual standing in one spot with no moving background setting up a camera on a tripod well commercial photography and videography in Malaysia are still restricted if I set up a tripod it will look like I'm doing something too serious like I'm doing business out in the open I don't want to have to explain myself if I'm caught in a bad situation holding the camera while I'm talking seems like I'm doing this just for myself nothing too serious this is just a vlogging activity that everyone is doing these days even with their smartphone if you found my sharing useful, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal links in the description below on how you can do that. Any small contribution goes a long way. It will help me to create more content and publish them right here. I hope that you see I'm trying my best to make more content and share as much as I can with you guys. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll definitely see you again in the next one. Until then, please go out to take more photographs if you can. Bye-bye.